When I left Fauske, the morning weather was perfect for a motorcycle trip. The day's sun was not yet too hot, and only a few clouds were in the sky. The first kilometers felt like the best time of the whole trip. What I saw was the constantly changing scenery of the sea and mountains. Mountains and the sea can both evoke a wide range of emotions. With their towering peaks and vast expanses, mountains can inspire awe and wonder. The sheer size and majesty of mountains can make people feel small and insignificant, but at the same time, they can also inspire feelings of empowerment and strength. For some, the challenge of climbing a mountain can be a thrilling and rewarding experience, while for others, the beauty and solitude of mountain landscape can provide a sense of peace and calm. With its vastness and power, the sea can also evoke a range of emotions. The ocean's vastness can inspire feelings of freedom and limitless possibility, while the power of the waves can instill a sense of awe and reverence. For some, the sea is a place of adventure and exploration. For others, it is a source of inspiration and creativity. The gentle rhythms of the waves and the soothing sound of the ocean can also provide a sense of tranquility and relaxation. Well, uh, I took a short break here to stretch my legs and uh, I walk down to the waterline. This place is uh, called Salzstraumen and uh, it's on the road 17, National Tourist Road. And uh, well, Salzstraumen is a big, straight, narrow kind of strait and uh, tidal water flows through it. Huge amount of water and uh, it's nice looking place to view and uh, have a short break, have a morning coffee here and uh, then I will continue. There's a lot of bridges here in Norway. Kjellinstrau roof. Sometimes they put the information before the bridge, what is the wind over the bridge and uh, yeah, if it's uh, too strong you shouldn't go there. At least it might uh, rip your helmet off. Now I'm uh, on an exciting road. This is a construction road and uh, at the beginning of this road it says that uh, at your own risk you can ride this road. And, uh, this should take me one interesting place if I can get to the end of the road. Extreme coming down there. Oh, man. I'm 
can't see anything because I have sunglasses. This is spooky tunnel. Oh, I'm so glad I can see daylight there the end of the tunnel. Hopefully no train is coming. <laughs> it's not a train light. Uh, it's long. Oh, it was it was spooky and long tunnel. Okay, I guess that this is the end of the road. No Ural can pass this amount of snow. Uh, I have to be careful. <laughs> Beautiful day and place. This is hydroelectric dam. There's actually two of them, but uh, I couldn't reach the other one, so I end up here and took some uh, really nice photos. Yeah, now I'm heading back. Drive at your own risk. No use to take shortcuts here. Huge dam. Vast amount of rocks there.
The dam I saw was the Svartisen Power Station hydroelectric dam. The lake behind the dams is Turklon Vatnet, which gets its water from the Svartisen glacial area. The road meandered down, and I drove through the construction tunnels again. They were not much of an experience anymore, having driven through them in the other direction a couple of hours earlier. The side road joined the FB-17 after meandering for a few kilometers. As soon as I got to the big road, I had to drive through the tunnel again. But it was modern and well-lit road tunnel, many of which are in Norway. The road wound its way south. Motorcycles were driving towards and past me. The Ural sidecar motorcycle is no speed freak, so the journey continued leisurely. I had time to look at the magnificent scenery from the road, which I always admire when I travel in Norway. I still had 200 kilometers to go to Mu Irana, and there would be a long ferry ride ahead of me. Before the ferry, I stopped to look at the Svartisen glacier, clearly visible from the roadside rest stop. There was also one ferry trip of about an hour. During this we crossed the Arctic Circle, marked by a monument of art on the beach. I also stopped for a short break at the Grönsvik Coastal Fortress Museum. Unfortunately, the museum was not open then. Right, it starts to be last kilometers today, so I reach my hotel in Mu Ira. It was uh, quite a day. I started 12 hours ago. Of course, uh, I didn't ride all the time. There were pause when uh, waiting for ferry when I was uh, visiting this uh, hydroelectric dam. Okay. Uh, Mu Irana is uh, almost around the corner, 10 kilometers more, and uh, I can get my hotel. And uh, I guess that next, next night will be silent night. 